Hello guys, welcome back to SE1 Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for SE1 Engineering video. Today our lecture is about the column buckling load. The buckling load is very important in the design of column. And the buckling load can be defined as it is the maximum load after which the column starts buckling. Or we can define as it is the maximum load at which the column starts to deflect in the lateral direction. So if I suppose this is in the column and it has been fixed support here at the bottom. So upon the load, this column will take this load. But if this load increases, increases, and at a certain point, this load will increase by that amount that this column will start deflection in the lateral direction. So we can see here that there will be some deflection in the lateral direction of the column because the column capacity is less than the demand of load. So this load or that load at which the column starts buckling, you see here, there is a little deflection. So this little deflection I represented by a delta. So when we see here this, there is a deflection in the little direction, so this load is called as the buckling load. Or we call it the critical or the idle load. I will explain this load in detail. And this buckling load can be found out by this formula. This formula was developed by Euler in 1757 which was a Swiss mathematician. And this formula can be used for the various kind of column. But this formula depends on different conditions. For example, the E, the modulus of elasticity of the material used in the column, the moment of inertia of the column, which means the cross-section of the column, and the length of the column. Also, it is also dependent on the N. N represents the support condition. For example, for this support condition, you can see here, there is pen in support, so for this column, the buckling load is different. And for this support condition, which is fixed in pen in support, for this condition, the idle load will be different. So this formula depends on the support condition of the column. And this formula is called as the Euler buckling formula. This formula has certain assumptions. So by fulfilling these assumptions, we can use this Euler buckling formula to calculate our buckling load. So the first assumption is that the column should be straight. The column should always be straight. Then we can use this formula. It should have axial load. Only the along the axis of the column, the load should act. Then we can calculate our buckling load. And the column should have uniform cross section. It means that it should not the cross section of the column should not change over the length. And neglecting the shortening of column, it means that upon this axial load we can neglect if there is certain decrease in the length of the column due to this axial load so we should not take this small decrease of the column due to the axial load so neglecting the shortening of column effect and also it only for only when the column is under buckling condition so only buckling failure when there is column which fails only under buckling so we can use this formula so these are these are the five different assumptions. After fulfilling these assumptions, we can use our Euler buckling formula for calculating our critical load. And if our load, for example, this is the load on the column, and if it is greater than the Euler buckling load, then the column will fail in buckling. So our load, this is the load, P is the load on the column, it should always be less than the critical load, or we can say the Euler buckling load then our column is safe otherwise it will fail so this formula in this formula we can replace this factor n square by l by another factor so we call it l effecto i will explain this in detail l effecto is equal to the l divided by n so we can replace this l by n ratio with L effecto and we can get our another equation. So by replacing this ratio here in this equation, it becomes PE, the Euler buckling load is equal to the pi square EI divided by the L effecto square. So this can also, this formula can also be used for calculating the Euler buckling load, which is simplified form of this equation. So now this buckling load I mentioned before depends on the support condition for different support condition this buckling load changes 
So let's consider that this is in a column with pen in support. You see here the two pen are there at the both ends of the column. So upon applying the load on this column, this column, if this is a load P, this column will deflect of course in this way. It cannot move from these supports condition. So it will only deflect in this way. And this is the deflection in the literal direction of the column. So what is the effective length in this case? Because effective length is very important in the this formula of the buckling load. Effective length can be defined as it is the length in which there is a deflection in the column. We can write it here. In this case, the whole length of the column has been buckled. So the effective length will be equal to the length of the column because the whole column is in, is in buckle. That's why the L effective is equal to the L. And the critical load or the iron buckling load in this case will become pi square EI divided by L square. Because as I mentioned before, in this case the effective length is equal to the length of the column. So we can simply use this formula for calculating the buckling load for such type of column where there is two pen in conditions. Now coming to the another type of support conditions. You see here that there is a fixed support here at this end of the column and at this end of the column there is a pen in support. So this column upon applying the load it will buckle in this direction. And this portion will not show any buckling. So this we see here the deflection. Here. Now what is the effective length in this case? So it will be not equal to complete length of the column but it will be equal to 0 0.7 times the length. So now the effective length is decreased because the column didn't show the complete deflection all over the length but only a certain part of the column has been deflected that's why its effective length is decreased because effective length depends on the deflection of the column. Now what will be the critical load for this type of column for this type of support condition of the column. So if you plug this value 0.7 times L here so it comes out to be P critical equal to 2 pi square EI divided by L square. Just putting this effect, L effective value, putting this value here this, into this equation, you, you will get this value. So now for this column, where both ends of the fi column are fixed, so it will deflect like in this way. So these both, these both starting and ending points will not deflect because of the fixed support. So only deflection will be seen in the middle of the column. And so in this case, the effective length will be more decreased. It comes out to be 0.5L. So this is the half of the length. Only the half of the length will be buckled. And in this case, if you plug this value here in this equation, we will simply PE will be equal to 4 times pi and pi squared into EI divided by L squared. So now we see here that the critical load or the buckling load is being increased because of the factor 4. You see here it was 2. Before it was only 1. And now it is 2. So the more load can this column can take to make it buckle. And in case of the fixed supports, it can take 4 times more load than in case of the pin ended column. So by in, by making change in the support condition, we can change our buckling load because N is a factor which depends on the support conditions. Now in the case of this column which is only one fixed support here at the bottom end. So in this case when the load is applied it will buckle here like in this way. So we assume that this buckling length or we can see the effecto we can see the L effecto is two times the length. So this effecto length is equal to the two times of length of the column and it's critical or we can say the other buckling load is equal to the so 
the 4 comes in the denominator. So this means that the buckling load has been decreased in the case of the this type of column where there is only fixed in column where, where there is only fixed end at one point, not at the other point where the other end is free. So in this case, the other buckling load is the minimum one. So we should try to avoid such type of column conditions. So this video clears the column buckling load. That what are the, what are the main factors? You can see clearly here that there are four main factors: the n, e, i, and the length. These are the more main factors which affect the buckling load of the column. Hope you guys understand. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.